Today we're going to learn about asynchronous programming in Python with async IO as quickly as possible. So let us get right into it. All right, so as always, when it comes to these tutorials where I try to cover something as quickly as possible, this is not going to be a deep dive. We're not going to go into a lot of details. I wouldn't even call it a crash course. It's more like me giving you a very, very quick introduction into the topic, and then you can continue to study it on your own. Or if you want to, you can leave me a comment in the comment section down below and let me know that you're interested in a more detailed course. So maybe I can do that as well on my channel. But asynchronous programming belongs to the category of concurrent programming in Python. And there are three major ways to do concurrent programming in Python. One is asynchronous programming, another one is multi threading, and another one is multi processing. For the last two, I already have two videos on my channel, similar to this one, where I cover them as quickly as possible. So you can take a look at them if you want to. And today we're going to talk about asynchronous programming. Now, in a nutshell, you want to use multiprocessing when you have a lot of CPU bound tasks that you want to parallelize. So heavy computations that you want to do simultaneously on multiple CPU cores, you actually want to have multiple processes. Uh, you don't want to be limited by the global interpreter log. Multi threading is a little bit more I wouldn't necessarily say exotic, but it's a, a bit odd in Python because you have the global interpreter log and you don't have real multi threading unless you release the global interpreter log. But essentially, you want to use it when you don't want to manually handle the control. So you don't want to manually switch between the different threads. And you also maybe have to work with something that doesn't support asynchronous programming. But I want to I don't want to talk about this too much. I want to focus on asynchronous programming today. Uh, which is the topic of this video. So let us go into our coding directory. In my case, I'm going to navigate to the tutorial directory. And here now I'm going to create a file called main.py. Now I'm going to start by importing async IO and creating a so called coroutine. So a coroutine is basically a program component that can be suspended and resumed. So we can pause this, we can continue with this. And we define it by saying async def and then the name IO task. So an asynchronous function, essentially, in this case, this one takes name, delay and number of iterations as a parameter. Then we have a couple of iterations in this loop here. And we just print the task name and the current iteration, just so we can keep track of what is actually happening. And the key thing here is awaiting the async IO dot sleep call. So this is just a placeholder, you could have anything here, awaiting something that is asynchronous. So this could be also waiting for a response from a server, basically just any downtime that can be used in this single thread that we're running now asynchronous programming runs in a so called event loop, we have one thread, so we don't have any concurrent, I mean, we do have concurrency, but we don't have any parallel execution, we don't have multiple threads, we don't have multiple processes, we have one thread, and the event loop basically switches between the coroutines. So in this case, what we're saying here is, we're saying print a statement and then give back control yield back to the event loop and allow it to do something else while we're doing this. So we're basically saying sleep for whatever we pass as delay seconds, and then go back here. So every iteration, each iteration here is going to call this await async IO sleep, which means we're giving back control to the event loop and the event loop can then determine which of the other coroutines are capable of resuming. So we can see that this works by defining an asynchronous main function. What we do here is we measure the time of the executions, we have one time here, an async IO gather call. So we're calling the gather function. And we're passing here three tasks called a B and C with different delays, but the same number of iterations. And these are going to be executed asynchronously. So concurrently as three coroutines, which basically means when A is sleeping, we can do B when A and B are sleeping, we can do C and so on. So we can switch back and forth because we have this downtime this idle time. Uh, in addition to that down below here, we have three separate await statements. So we await three tasks in a row. So this is serially, this is not concurrently, we're not using the gather function. And this basically means task A has to be executed, then task B has to be executed task C has to be executed, and then we're done. Now, of course, here, I also need to import time. And also, of course, we need to run the main function here, we do that by starting an event loop by creating an event loop with async IO run. So we do async IO run, and we pass main, but we don't pass main as a function. So as a reference to the function, we actually call main and we do that in async IO run. So we're actually using parentheses in here. 
So when I run this now, you can see we have A, B and C being executed concurrently. So this happens um, yeah, at the same time, basically 4.5 seconds. Whereas if I do that separately, we can see that we have first A, then B, then C, and this is going to take much longer, 11 seconds. Now, this also happens if we're not awaiting. Await is the keyword that returns control back to the event loop. So if I instead cause some downtime here with time.sleep, which is perfectly fine, I can do that. If I say time.sleep delay instead of async IO sleep delay, this doesn't work anymore because now I'm never returning control back to the event loop. I now basically say there is some downtime, but since we're not using multi-threading here, what is actually happening is we're just waiting, we're blocking uh, the threat. So we're just waiting for this to finish before we can move on. So if you actually want to give control back to the event loop, you have to use await. And in this case, you would have to use async io.sleep. Another thing that we can do is we can run tasks in the background and we can return them, save them into a variable and then await them at some point later in the function. So here, for example, I have this background task, which prints running, then waits for five seconds, then prints finishing. And what I can do here is I can do async io dot create task with background task being called in here. Uh, this returns then the task instance, whatever happens afterwards is executed immediately. So this print statement, for example, but then I can also await the task and I can say, okay, don't continue until this is done and then print the final statement. And of course, everything that happens after async IO run also has to wait for all of this to finish. So if I run this, you can see continuing immediately, um, even before running is being printed. And then only when this background task is finished, because we're awaiting it here, only then do we get, but for this, we need to wait and this waits too. What can also be interesting is using the wait function. In this case here, we have again, a very simple setup. We have two coroutines, print statement, waiting time, print statement, return value here with two seconds here with five seconds. And then we have them as two tasks. And then we use the wait function, not the gather function. This allows us to specify a return condition. So in this case, we do done and pending await async IO dot wait. And then we specify here return when async IO first completed. What this basically means is that this whole thing is going to return. So we're going to stop waiting when one of them returns. So when the first one returns, we're going to continue with the code. And this is going to return two things. It's going to return the list of the tasks that are finished so that are done and the list of the tasks that are not finished yet. So we can also print all of that after this is being awaited, we can print the finished tasks and the pending tasks. And then in the end, we can also do another await async IO wait pending to wait for the remaining tasks. So let's run this now. You can see one start two start, then one finishes one end. You can see the finished tasks are uh, result is equal to one done. And then we have the pending tasks, which doesn't have a result yet. So we have a future. And at some point, then this also finishes and we get to end. Now, if you don't want to wait indefinitely, you can also use the wait for function. This allows us to specify a timeout. In this case, we have a long operation taking five seconds and we only allow for two seconds by using wait for. In the case that these two seconds are surpassed, we get a timeout error. We can catch that and handle it. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to print took too long. So if I run this, you're going to see one, two, took too long because this takes five seconds and this takes two seconds. Of course, this only works with a wait because we need to pass control back to the event loop. Uh, it doesn't work if I use time.sleep because then it's going to block the threat. And that's basically it. There's of course much more to cover manual stuff you can do with the event loop, task groups, shielding and so on. There's much more to cover in general when it comes to concurrency in Python. If you want to have more detailed tutorials, let me know in the comment section down below. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to check out the similar videos I already have on multi-threading and multi-processing. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.